Hey guys. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Ian Harvey. This is my friend Rachel. Hey. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the ankles and ankle pain. And I thought that we'd start with a bit of a client interview so that you guys could see kind of my intake process. I do the whole, you know, paper intake thing, but I like to hear the story of my client's pain. Where else can people just like sit and talk mm -hmm. about their pain and really get that story out where they're not being rushed? Right, exactly. So, um, you know, don't rush your client. Ask a lot of follow-up questions. Find out how they feel about what they're feeling. So, Rachel, tell me, tell me about your ankle. Okay. Um, your ankles. Uh. Yes, it's actually both that experience pain. Mostly my left ankle. Uh, I am a dancer, so uh, a lot of times I dance without shoes, and there's not a lot of support. And I know that that's probably not the best for my ankles. And then I waitress, so I'm constantly moving. Um, I first started experiencing pain on the more so on the outside of the ankle okay. um, and then lately it's been transitioning into the inside of the ankle um, a lot of times I can't bend all the way on this on this left side mm -hmm. because it's so tight um, down here that I physically can't go any farther so when you say that you're talking about going into a squat yes or a plie or a plie oh. <laughs> So, yeah, how long have you been, ha been having this pain? Mm, probably about three to four years. Okay, when you were younger and you were doing dance, mm -hmm. it didn't really show up then? No. Okay, so this is kind of a semi-recent development. Mm -hmm. Has it gotten worse, would you say? Absolutely. Has it? So how has this pain evolved? You said that it's moved from the outside to the inside. Mm -hmm. Is that still kind of going on? Yes, okay. it's, uh, the pain is less severe on the outside of the ankle and has become more severe on the inside of the ankle. Okay. Is it just on the inside now, or can you, can you still feel that outside I can part? still feel the pain on the outside. Okay. Do you have any cramps in your calves at night or yes. ever? Do you? Okay. Absolutely. Do you ever have any pain in your heel? Not typically. Okay. All right. Um, so the reason why I ask those questions is because when people have ankle pain or any kind of foot pain, I'm thinking of the calves. I'm thinking that they might be overly tight, and when that happens, people typically get cramps. They much more often get Charlie horses. So I like to ask about that, and that can be another goal that you can work with. And once you have talked about that stuff, I like to keep up, keep moving up the body. So Rachel, do you ever have any hip pain? Yes, uh, more so I guess with the pelvis. Um, when I was younger, they said that one side was more forward than the other. Okay. And so I, I tend to get a lot of uh, pain in my sciatic nerve and it runs okay. down. Okay, is that more on one side than the other? The left. The left side, so same side. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so um, when you get that pain, it, shoot, it does shoot down the leg. Yes. Okay, so in my head, I'm instantly thinking that these things are connected. I don't know if that's the case, but just because I have that idea in my head, I'm not going to ignore the ankles. I'm thinking that there's definitely stuff going on with this low leg stuff. I want to work with this. I want to work with the ankle itself. And I want to explore the hip, which we'll do in, a, in another video. Okay, Rachel, let's do this. Awesome. First thing I notice is the extreme pointiness of her toes. She's an extreme plantar flexion. Just as a matter of course, that's her ankle posture. A lot of parts of your body can have posture, just like you can have shoulder posture, you can have ankle posture. And hers involves a lot of plantar flexion. And I want to take a moment for a quick rant about um, structural massage. I am not a structuralist, and if there are structuralists among us, I think that the work that you do is great, it works really well, but I don't think that we can have the effects that um, a lot of the gurus and the experts in massage therapy think that we can. For instance, a lot of people would say that we could change this posture of her ankle by doing this. By going from distal to proximal with all of our myofascial or structural integration moves. By taking this fascia and shoving it this way. And that's just not how it works. By the same token, they'd have us bringing this fascia downward. And while that's all good stuff and we will be working in this direction and having her move this ankle to facilitate some moves up in this direction, 
I don't think that we can change the shape of a client's body. That's up to their nervous system. And it's up to how they use their body every other day of the week. So if we want to change this amount of plantar flexion, that's going to be a matter of not only what we do on the massage table, but what they do. So self-care, exercises, and some things that I don't feel are in my particular uh, wheelhouse. Like I don't feel comfortable prescribing exercise. So I would want her to go see someone who is comfortable with that kind of thing. So that's a good reason to have a good professional network of people that you can refer your clients out to. So while I will be directing my massage in different directions, I'm not thinking of changing the shape of this ankle. I'm thinking of making contact with this nervous system, giving it new stimulus, moving this tissue in ways that it's not used to moving, and having faith in her nervous system to kind of make use of that information. After working from here down, I'm expecting for her nervous system to have a little bit of an epiphany and say, oh hey, maybe this part of me doesn't need to be as habitually tight. And that effect might not last for a long time, but along with some self-care and with physical activity, hopefully all of these messages together can change how this low leg is affecting this ankle. Okay, rant over. First, I want to evaluate these ankles. She says that she has inner and outer ankle pain, especially on this left side. So I want to know how much pressure I can apply. So I'm going to start by sinking in just a bit, and my eyes are on her face. I want to make sure that she's not wincing, or holding her breath, or looking too distressed. And Rachel, as I sink my fingers in here, do you feel pain? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. So I'm going to increase just a bit. I'm working around these malleoli, these big bones on the outsides of the ankle, or the big bony prominences. And can you feel anything in there? I did feel a little bit. Okay, and which side? Uh, both, but it was more so right there. More on the inside. Okay, so this is tracking with some of these tendons that are descending down from this anterior compartment. I definitely want to work up here, and I want to work with the angle of this ankle as I do so. And all of this area where she's having this pain are places where tendons run. So I want to work with all of the muscles and all of the fascia that becomes those tendons. I don't necessarily want to do a lot of friction in this area because this area is already inflamed. These nociceptors are already listening really, really hard for pain signals. So I want to start and I want to concentrate where the pain isn't. So I'm going to be working with the feet. I'm going to be working with the leg. And I'll do some work with the ankle itself but it's not going to be my area of focus. I'm not going to spend 10 minutes just wailing on this already painful area or sinking in on trigger points or what have you because this is the innocent victim in this scenario. This ankle is getting beat up on by all these muscles and we need to get these guys to chill out. And because of what seems to be an overpowering of these anterior muscles by all these posterior muscles, we're going to, to do a lot with gastrox and soleus and everything in these posterior compartments. Let's work with this anterior compartment. And I'm not going to be too focused on any particular muscle here. I just want to spread this tissue and I want to work with it in different directions and with different angles to this ankle. So let's start with some nice spreading. I'm doing this with the palm of my hand, but if you find this uncomfortable for your wrist, there are different tools for this. One of my favorite is to use paired up thumbs. And allow your body weight to do this work. And Rachel, do let me know if any of this is ever too much, okay? Okay. Thank you. 
And this is just the warm up. So we're not doing anything too intense. And as I get down to this more tendinous area, I'm definitely going to lighten up because these tendons or the nerves near them are inflamed. And I can't palpate any inflammation, so I can't say, hey, you've got tendinitis. In fact, I expect that it is a relatively stable condition and more related to the nervous system being hypersensitive. So we're going to work to uh, reduce that hypersensitivity. And the only way to do that is to work within the, the uh, client's pain tolerance. So if I were to be doing painful massage right now, I would be sending the signal to the nervous system that it needs to be even more vigilant, that it needs to, pr to turn up that pain knob so that it can uh, listen even more closely. And that's not what I want. So right now I'm working with a soft fist. And I've got my elbow anchored into my side. So this is coming from me traveling forward. It's not coming from my pecs. It's a little painful. Is that painful? OK. Mm -hmm. So and is that with my thumb down here or with my fist up here? Uh, the line that you're running up. OK. So I need to lighten up even more. Thank you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. And keep letting me know, okay? Okay. Thank you. So when that happens, what I don't want you to do, viewer at home, is to say, oh, sorry. That is not a confidence-boosting response. When you use a little bit too much pressure, and you say, and they say, that's too much, and you say, oh, sorry, and take your hands off, that makes them worry that they've done something wrong. They'll be less likely to speak up in the future if you freak out about it. So instead of that, I say, ah, thank you for letting me know. And that makes them more likely to speak up in the future. Psychology. Okay. <laughs> so I'm staying quite broad. I'm using my finger pads and thumb pads. Think origin to insertion and beyond. And of course, with someone with this much pain sensitivity, Track. Track your client's face. Track their breathing. Make sure that they are continuing to respire. And occasionally, go back to being very broad. And if I were working on the entire lower limb, so if I were working on the entire leg from the waist down, I would be reintegrating this entire leg every now and then. But for today, we're just working on this leg. And once I feel that I've warmed the area up, once again going past those origin sites of these anterior leg muscles, so traveling up onto the femur a bit, I'm going to again change directions. This time I want to incorporate some ankle movement. So to do this, I can bring my hand under and cup the ankle. And by bringing my body forward, I can dorsiflex this ankle just a bit. And see if you can relax that foot and ankle and allow me to do that work. Good. And so now, as I lean, I'm giving just a bit of movement, just a bit of dorsiflexion to this ankle. I'm still staying very light and sensitive with my techniques, especially as I incorporate new stimulus. And once I feel that I've acclimated this area to my contact, and I've warmed the area up. I'm going to get a bit more specific. So don't dig in with these metacarpophalangeal joints. Think of these flats of your phalanges here. And of course, be careful with this edge of the tibia here. We don't want to 
put bone against bone. That's not necessarily fun. I'm going to start down near this ankle, but I'm going to be gentle and broad. So engage the fascia and travel proximally. As I do so, I can either kind of pump this ankle just by rocking my body, or I can gradually bring it up with me. Either way, I'm sending some interesting new signals to the nervous system. For this first session, I don't want to press my luck. I don't want to do too, too much in any part of this leg. So after having done this, I'm going to give it a break. I'm not going to do any more work on it. I'll move on to the foot, and then I'll move on to the posterior low leg. But let's say that you have desensitized your client's painful low leg and ankle there are some things that you can start doing. If you're working on a client who has lost some of that sensitivity, maybe over the last three sessions or so, you can start to get more specific. You can work with thumbs, thumb pads, and then thumb tips. And as you do this, you can have them engage this foot themselves. You can bring in some active client engagement. So Rachel, as I sink in here, I'd like you to bring your foot up toward your head okay. and then point it down toward this wall. Okay. And just do that very slowly. And don't go too far either. And I'm just kind of pantomiming this. I'm not sinking in much at all. This is just what I would do in a client with more. And go ahead and drop that foot. This is what I would do in a client with uh, more tolerance for this kind of thing. And you can do strips outward. You can do strips upward as they do that motion. Make sure that your client keeps breathing. And again, track their face. And Rachel, you can rest your ankle. And as you do this, you can start working more and more directly with this ankle. You can start doing friction around these malleoli. You can do friction into these tarsals and all of these joints. And in general, you can start becoming a little bit more assertive with your work. Just realize that you're still having this conversation with the nervous system that, hey, I want you to be able to accept touch. And doing so with too much pain is going to send the opposite message. My next step would be to work with the feet, but I've already done a video on that. So we're going to work with the calves. We've got our client prone now, and Rachel has let me know that she does have quite a bit of sensitivity in her calves, which is not at all unexpected for me. So for this first session, you might be wise with someone having this much sensitivity to just do a nice Swedish massage. Make it a thorough Swedish massage, allowing yourself to come to the sides, working with these peroneals otherwise known as the fibularis group, allowing yourself not just to work with gastrox, but also with soleus. So coming around just deep to that gastrox and working with this ankle and with this foot and following gastrox as it comes up and inserts on the posterior femur so a very thorough Swedish massage, but that would be all I would do for the first session. I want to show you some tricks that I would do in future sessions. But once again, I want to be kind this first session. And you might think that, you know, if I don't do my deep tissue stuff, how are they going to get better? And again, just think of the nervous system. Let it take its time. If I've done a few treatments and we're having less sensitivity, I can start doing things like scooping this fascia down by the ankle with my open fists and dragging it northward. You can go very slowly with this. This would be a case where I might want to use a little less lubricant than usual. I'm using jojoba right now. 
and bring it all the way up once again past this popliteal space up onto the femur. And any time that you're working in the posterior knee, that popliteum, just make sure that your pressure is out here and that you lighten up a bit because there's a lot of neurovasculature and joint tissue right there that I don't really want to compress. But on the lateral and medial aspects, that's where a lot of tendons run and it's where that gastrox is heading. You can do specific stripping using whatever tool is good for you. Just remember to treat each head of gastrox to come around to the side and into this medial portion to work with soleus and you can do that with both sides at the same time and to come all the way onto this lateral portion to hit these peroneals. And I would want to add in some movement. So bring the ankle up and then just by compressing down you can create some dorsiflexion as you work with this posterior leg. And you can use thumbs here, you can use kind of a petrissage grip. An easy way of doing this without just having to use one hand a whole lot is going to be to lead this leg down and just have them press the top of their foot into this pillow or table. So Rachel, I want you to press your foot down into the table and then release and repeat that a few times as you take some easy deep breaths and make that a little more gentle. And what this is going to be doing is it's going to be engaging those anterior leg muscles as you're working on these posterior leg muscles. You're not going to be getting a lot of stretch, but you are going to be getting some reciprocal inhibition by those anterior leg muscles firing. These posterior ones are going to have to chill out just a bit. And you can always bring the leg off the table. And now, Rachel, go ahead and bring that top of your foot up so the other direction, just like that, good. And that's always going to happen. There's no good way of explaining that. I'm convinced of that. And allow that to relax again and come back to neutral. And then bring that up again. And again, bring that back to neutral. I'm going to support her ankle. And then I can do some nice myofascial work as she continues that. And I'm barely using any pressure here because this area is quite sensitive. All right, guys, that's it for ankles. Just remember to go slowly, take your client's pain tolerance into account, and work where the pain isn't. And think of all those muscles that are contributing to that ankle pain. So all the things on that anterior, posterior, and lateral leg. Let me know what you think in the comments. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.